Let's explore this transition of the clay brush to, to another brush, basically our uh, soft to our hard. Let's explore this by giving ourselves a task. Basically, we're going to try to take this square and pull out, sorry, we're going to try to take this sphere and pull out a little square, something kind of hard surface out of it. It's a real simple assignment, but it'll really illustrate all the points. So I'm going to come in here and select the clay brush. Okay, we're going to work with the default clay brush, nothing else. Uh, we can leave symmetry on. Yeah, let's leave symmetry on. And uh, just start to pull out a form. So it's looking soft and organic, but how do we get this to be hard edged? Very clean hard edged form where we've got nice lines in there, nice lines here. How do we do that with just a simple brush? Well, let's just try it. We're going to try it the hardcore way, which means we're going to just be working with the brush in smaller pieces. And uh, maybe let's divide the model a couple of times. This is going to give us more resolution. and get and add to the bottom and add to the top really wishing for a scraper right about now something that would allow me to just scrape clay but you know what that clay brush with alt does a pretty good job okay I'm getting a little lost I'm losing some hard edge here and I can tell it's it's getting a little soft right there. So that's okay. Let's switch. Well, let's try to do just with the clay brush. Sorry, I was going to switch to another brush. But I don't want to do that. I want to look at how can we get the clay brush to behave. Okay, we can shift. It's one of the brush I'll allow myself. And you can see, you know, one of the things that just happens. It's it's really hard even as I go over this form it becomes really hard to not have dotted lines all over this. So let's look at one of the first features that's going to make a difference in this. And that's in the brush palette. So let's take the brush palette, the little swatch on the side, throw it over. And what we're going to do right off the bat is take a look at depth. So depth in this case can be used to help us control the form and before we start looking at the analysis of it let's just anal let's just do something crazy like set it not to a hundred because just so you know a hundred sometimes produces different results than like say 99 inside of ZBrush it has to do with the math so you've been warned <laughs> all right you see what that did you know we didn't have to I didn't have to explain it but basically 100 meant whoop, you got some serious depth out of that and it meant it went there pretty quickly because there's a lot now let's say set that a little lower uh oh so oh, that's starting to be interesting let's go negative and nothing's happening oh wait something's happening this is always where that black dot is that wherever you click on the surface that's the black dot and then if I set that to a negative, then it took the sphere of activity and it just pushed it back in space. So that's why I started to get a, an effect back in there. It's kind of a mind trip, but it works. And uh, it really has some cool functionality. But let's, let's do something else. Let's set it to zero. And I'm going to undo those, those things. And let's do something else. Set it to Alt. I'm going to turn that floor off. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, now suddenly things are already looking brighter. It's already just with that one adjustment, it's naturally behaving much cleaner. And without too much work, 
I'm going to get some clean edges. Whoops, careful. So depth becomes one of those features. If we were to have our grid here, depth is one of those features that gives us a little bit more control and a little bit more towards the hard end side, hard head, hard surface side of things. Okay, uh, that's as opposed to the clay brush's default behavior way up here, its algorithm. But there are more features in the brush palette that are really going to help us lock this down. So let's really uh, focus our attention right on this axis and see if we can make that a little bit cleaner. Uh, one trick that we'll do sometimes is we add a little bit of geometry. So I gotta increase the depth. Let's set it to 3. Let's set depth to 10. And see I'm trying to manually line those up. And then set that back to 0. And again, pressing Alt is really good, but one thing you'll notice is it starts to get really sensitive at the edge. That's the next feature that we want to look at that's going to help us get hard surface on it. Okay, and what's happening is the brush is a circle, and it's calculating the surface direction, which is all pointing up in this direction, but it'll also be calculating these guys and these guys which are all facing in other directions and so then it starts to wobble so you can imagine the the normal might originally be facing in this direction but then now it actually be facing directly at me and would start to wobble as it moves along the surface so we need something in there to control that. And that's part of that framework. So let's undo that a bit. And one thing we can do is lower our sample radius. So if a sample radius is all the way up, then it's going to sample everything in there. If you start lowering that, then it's going to start looking at less take it all the way down and it'll look at a lot less. It's a lot like, if you're uh, already familiar with it, it's a lot like focal shift, which we can't see right now, it's right there. It's like focal shift for your uh, samples. Uh, let's take this, let's put it right in half, 0.35. And I don't know about you, but I'm not noticing that behavior. just closing that off a little bit really did a lot to dampen to change things and get us a little bit harder of an edge in there uh, I want to set this embed to one and test an idea out there we go and I'm gonna set that back to zero pretty cool. See? Now I'm behaving, I'm working with it just like I was before, but it's not getting all touchy and feely right there at the edge. And I'll prove that one more time. We're going to go back into samples, and we're going to set that back to what it was, which is 0.75. And now as soon as I hit that edge, you know, it starts to get a little too sensitive. So just lowering this makes a difference. But there's one more feature that I want to look at inside samples before we move on, and that is the stabilize orientation. Because while we're definitely doing a fantastic job, if you look, you can still see little subtleties of how this form is not quite hard edge, not quite solid. And Stabilize orientation is going to do some good work to fix that. So let's just set it up. Remember, if you set this all the way to 100, sometimes the math in the sliders 
uh, is just a very, is different behavior than you expect. But check this out. I'm pressing Alt, and I'm being pretty careless. You know, I'm I'm going up. Whoa, that that's a really important point to keep in mind. Basically, I got too much of the normals of the round side, and so the circular disc that is the ZBrush brush uh, basically flipped like a seesaw. It just tottered too far in, and that caused that problem. So the solution, as you can imagine, is lower your sample radius, and then you can get quite close before it flips. And when it flips, you're going to have some seriously positive results there. But let's test it. There we go. Okay. Pretty cool. Now, this is looking very clean. Let's do it on the top. And let's press Alt. Oops, careful. And then press all. You gotta add the clay. Make that a little bit larger. And there you go. Alright. So we've still got some problems. But overall we're doing pretty awesome, I think, in terms of how this thing is is pulling together. And we're doing all of this with just simple simple brush adjustments and that's the real important key we've only really adjusted a few settings depth sample radius and stabilize orientation in the next section let's see what else we can do to really modify this